I figured it out. Artificial intelligence. <laughs> That's what it is. This is my theory, okay? Last season, my theory was that the people was alternate ver versions in the multiverse, right? Like, we wasn't seeing our version of Miranda and Carrie and Charlotte. This was another multiverse version. That was my theory for last season. My theory for this season, though, artificial intelligence. Come on, L. That's exactly what it is. That's why people dead and was resurrected. That's why people don't know what the hell is going on. Artificial intelligentsia. Them people not sitting down at no table writing this script out. They went into the internet and say, hey, this is what I want you to do. This is what the people want to, it's supposed to act like. This is what they need to say. Write me a script. And it was like, okay, good morning, pumpkin. Here's your pumpkin. He was like, listen, why were you out there dancing with the devil that would i don't i don't want to end up on page six and be, i say sir page six got better things to do than to look after you and your shiny head sir you are running for the city accountant in the third district upstairs to the left like don't nobody give a damn about you sir and i'm like lord what would i do if anybody ever told me that i probably want to get on goddamn wikipedia and like let's learn about it take it like teach me fool i'm trying to understand what, the, what you're talking about like what's causing it is it from something? Is it curable? Like, I know that's what the Viagra is for. Do you have a pill for it? How long you had it for? Like, let's get down to the nitty gritty. What's what your vast deference talking about? And that would have killed the mood and his ass would have probably went home. See, that's why I'm single now, y'all. Baby, when I tell you the 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 pump for the, for the pump, like the actual pump, <laughs> for the pump, Babe, I'm talking about industrial strength. You hear me? I'm talking about this come from Sam's Club. This is like a bulk size. We about to inflate a jumping house for a three to five year old's birthday party. Baby, this thing was industrial strength. I thought <laughs> that it was going to be, you know, when you go to the doctor's office, baby, it got the little bulb, you know, the. I thought it was going to be that. My man could have blew up a tire to a Dodge Ram pickup. Something about that lady was just really funny to me. Hey, your car don't work? No. Bring your broke ass over here. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl, LB. Welcome to my channel, Watch With Me, LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny. I don't want no kisses right No, I don't. Fun, fresh, and funny rants, reviews, and recaps on my favorite movies. Oh, I'm sorry. Our favorite movies and TV shows. I didn't hate this one, y'all. I did not hate this one. God is real. Let me tell y'all something. Me and Tina Turner watched this episode and we had about only 17 complaints. Only 17, y'all. That is what we call progresso. No, what's, I don't know, progress. Okay, that's progress. I'm gonna let Tina Turner go ahead about her business. She got her shine. She got to say hello, say hello. All right, well, listen, that's your choice. You making your own choices for yourself. And you <clears throat> No, you gonna, you have to leave. Uh, uh. <laughs> you, <have to. laughs> you have to leave. Blue, you get down, girl. What? You, <laughs> you gotta get down. Blue, at this point, you're being disrespectful. You're being disrespectful. You got, you can't stand this old <laughs> Blue. You cannot stay this whole sh thing. <laughs> Ow! Oh! Oh! Ah, oh, shit! Oh! I'm out here looking like Eddie Monster. What is going on? Girl, you out here got, you done scratched me all in my face. Oh! If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell for the notifications. If you are so inclined to share this video, I would appreciate you. Help me grow my baby channel. Thank you. So the episode opens up and unfortunately we are um, over there with Marie, Miranda, Marie. Woo! Marie, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. We are over there with Che and Miranda and her Miranda's five o'clock alarm goes off. And of course, you know, meandering Miranda is just, <gasps> just so just concerned that she don't want to wake Che up um, because it's five o'clock in the morning. And Che is very annoyed that Miranda's alarm is going off at five in the morning because they just went to bed at four. Miranda says that she has to go to Brooklyn 
because she got to make sure Brady don't stay in bed all day and she got to make some him some breakfast. And then she has an early class, okay? Now, class like a Zumba class or like a spin class because it can't be the class that you have at Columbia because you ain't said nothing about the class since last season. All right, I don't, you know, you getting a degree in humanitarian, world aid, civil rights, and, um, you know, restoration or whatever the hell. Like, the title of the, the degree is long, and she's at Columbia, okay? So, I'm going to just assume from my own experience in grad school that she had dropped out. Because, baby, it ain't no playtime when you go to grad school. It ain't, it ain't, we don't, we don't do that. We in class for three, four, five hours a day per class. You have readings to do, you have assignments to do, you have presentations, you have publications, you have research you have to do. It ain't no hope. So Miranda been cleaning up seaweed on the beach. She been going to meditation classes. She been going to AA meetings, which is cool. You still gotta do that. But she look like she got buku leisure time. Like she just been helping Che run the lines. She been, you know, going to the club at night. She been going to the show to see Che ruin the family scene. Where your books at? Where's your research? Where, why you not in the stacks, baby? Why you not on campus? Why we haven't seen you in 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 uh? You don't have an assistantship you have to do. You don't have research and stuff. Like I just I don't. I was confused because what are we talking about class for? Because now you don't even talk about class. I have forgotten I was a damn professor. Anyway, let me let it go. I'm gonna let it go. Miranda is leaving out the room and she runs into this chair and she's like, "Ow, fuck!" Che is like. Oh my God. She is very frustrated that Miranda hit her leg on this chair and made a noise. Not, oh my God, Miranda, are you okay? Not, oh damn, we need to move that chair. Not, not saying nothing, because that was an option too. They say, oh my God, just very annoyed about it. Throw Che away, baby. Hashtag, throw Che away. I figured it out. Let me sit up straight. Artificial intelligence. <laughs> that's what it is that's why none of this shit makes sense right this is my theory okay last season my theory was that the people was alternate ver versions in the multiverse right like we wasn't seeing our version of Miranda and Carrie and Charlotte this was another multiverse version that was my theory from last season from season one my theory for this season though artificial intelligence come on L. that's exactly what it is that's why I don't none of the shit makes sense that's why people dead and was resurrected that's why people don't know what the hell is going on that's why they don't act the way that they do and sound the way that they do because this next scene artificial intelligence okay because Miranda's in the kitchen carving a pumpkin Okay, and then Miranda, OG, triple OG, I don't care about your feelings, Miranda says, hey, pumpkin, I got our pumpkin. Artificial intelligence. Come on, tell me. Hand clap, right? That's my theory and I know that's what it is. Them people not sitting down at no table writing this script out, they went into the internet and say, hey, this is what I want you to do. This is what the people want to, it's supposed to act like. This is what they need to say. Write me a script. And it was like, okay, good morning, pumpkin. Here's your pumpkin. And that's what came out. Good morning, pumpkin. Girl, you better shut up. So Miranda has made Brady breakfast. Brady is also 77 years old, okay? And he goes in the kitchen to get a cup of coffee, okay? People that generally get themselves cups of black coffee, no cream, no sugar, no no Tony toes or whatever that that little syrupy stuff that y'all put in y'all coffee I don't, I'm a tea person myself so I don't know what all the little gadgets and gadgets y'all put in there but I know I, I know them when I see them it's in a clear bottle and they got white letters on it with red and black and gold on it it's like Tony toes syrup or something like that like he ain't put like he just put black coffee in his cup and was drinking it that's not the kind of person that you say hey pumpkin I got our pumpkin and you make them pancakes that you put in the oven to keep warm that's the kind of person that need eggs over easy and dry toast while they on their way to work at the, the steel mill. Anyway, artificial intelligence. Um, when you finish eating, do you want to decorate the stoop with me? Like, 
I feel like at this point, Miranda missed the boat on that because we saw Brady in utero, right? Like all his whole in utero life. We saw Brady when he was a little tiny redheaded baby, okay? We saw him baby stage. We saw him pull up stage. We saw him, you know, I could pee on my own stage. And then we kind of lost track of Brady after a little while, you know what I'm saying? But now we back with him and he's 57 years old and she want to decorate the stoop with him. And I'm confusion. But when I think about the artificial intelligence, I'm not. Cause see, artificial intelligence is not foolproof. It fucks up sometimes. Have you ever seen an AI generated picture and then look at the hands on it? AI can't get hands right. AI will make a face so beautiful. You like, I wanna marry this person and look in their eyes every day, but it's not a real person. But if you look at that person's hand, one of them got nine fingers on it and the other one is the size of a newborn baby. AI cannot get hands right. So you know AI can fuck up sometimes. That's why they say, they put Miranda in the scene and say, hey pumpkin, here's the pumpkin. Do you want to decorate the stoops? Cause not Miranda. Now we over there with Miranda and Carrie and they are on their way to Charlotte's, I guess it's Charlotte's school, to her children's schools, like Halloween fundraiser party. Well, I know you got the context clues because if they're going to a Halloween party, obviously we in October, it's fall time. And it, that part of the show really pissed me off. And I'm like, baby, listen, I don't want to see nobody enjoying no cool, crisp weather when we are on the Dante's ninth level of hell outside baby i don't i don't have time for that my thermostat is on 12 in my house at all times and y'all walk around in crisp cool new york weather shut up i was confusion because the halloween costumes in this scene were so freaking cute i was like listen costume people make me an answer baby how can you come up with all these cute halloween costumes these not party city come in a bag all one-stop shop kind of costumes you had to source this material. You had to go somewhere and find this stuff. Baby, they had a fire Josephine Baker complete with banana skirt. They had a, 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 a Big Edie and a Lil Edie from Great Gardens. Baby, let me tell you something about me. I love Big Edie and Lil Edie. They fascinate me to this day. I watch Great Gardens at least once a year. The documentary and the, the movie, okay? I love Big Edie and Lil I just I think I like old ladies because I love the Golden Girls. And I used to watch Designing Women when it used to come on TV. I think that's what it is. I'm, I will, I'll unpack that later, child. I ain't got time. Anyway, LTW was um, the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, what's that girl name? Naya was a fire earth, a Kit Kat woman, baby. Naya was serving us a body, okay? Miranda, nah, she had looked like she had just come from a knitting class, baby. She had a long knit. It was just knit. It was lots of like fabric and stuff. And she was just hobbling along. I don't know. Anyway. And um, no, we're not even gonna talk about. It. And then Anthony was the devil, baby. It was really cute. Costume people. If you trying to costume your main cat, it ain't but eight people you got to regularly dress for the scenes. Why you can't put forth this kind of effort into that with the thing? You know what I'm saying? Like these, it's the I don't know. It was just like and Charlotte was dressed like that lady from the show, The Americans. Okay, I've never watched The Americans, but I know I feel like it used to come on FX back in the day. I feel like it was a good show. I just never watched it because I had probably was watching something stupid. Anyway, Charlotte looked great, right? She looked so nice and normal, right? She didn't look like extra fancy, but she looked great, okay? Harry pulled up with a wig. And I was like, boy, that thing took at least 10 to 15 years off of your face. He said, this is me in eighth grade. And I could see it, y'all. I could see Harry in the 70s with that mbop from Hanson haircut. I love Harry, first of all. I just, I, Harry ain't really pissed me. I could, I could do without seeing his yam. I know it was a fake yam, but I'm just saying. But I love Harry in general, okay? I like Harry with a wig on. That was really funny. Moral of the story is the scene was really cute, y'all. It felt like sex in the city. It felt like the OG Carrie, Miranda, and Charlotte would have done something like this. And they were acting relatively normal. Carrie was cracking jokes that were like Carrie and not like cringeworthy, like ooh, kind of jokes. It was very normal. And I was like, baby, yes. Bring it on home. KTSE, keep the same energy. Let's let's do this all the time. Okay. And baby, let me tell y'all something. LTW. And Anthony on the dance floor dancing to TLC's Creep sent my heart a flutter. Okay? Because one, 
LTW looked great. Her titties was tittying, all right? They were sitting up the way that God intended it, okay? Anthony was dancing so well that I was surprised. I don't know why I don't remember Anthony dancing that well, but some of, I just feel like Anthony is my shining pride. Love me some Anthony. Anthony was dancing on a two and a four and not the one and a three. And if you know, you know. I said, Anthony, what were you doing dancing on that two and that four? You better get. Well, I was so proud of Anthony. He was really giving it to me. I was like, okay. This is the kind of energy I want. This is the kind of feeling I want. Naya's talking about how she wasted her, all her body, baby. She was serving us up. Now, I ain't gonna hold you. In the costume, because everybody that was married or like, oh, and she wasn't interested. And then Seema was like, shit, I'm gonna take you to this bar. Everybody in the bar got coins. It's a very expensive hotel bar. I'm gonna find you a man. And so they like, oh yeah. And I'm very excited about that. Cause once again, that feels normal. That feels like what the people would do in a normal circumstance, right? The only point of annoyance for me in the scene, <laughs> and it really wasn't annoying. It was more kind of like, be fucking for real, was LTW's husband came to the party in a suit with his hands in his pocket looking like a principal, okay? And I said, okay, well, maybe he couldn't go because he, was, he wasn't supposed to come because he was supposed to work or whatever, right? So why LTW's husband is a stick in the mud? And she's like, why you didn't wear the costume I got you? I got you the George Washington. And I was like, first of all, I ain't never seen a black man dress like George Washington if he didn't work at some sort of amusement park or some sort of historical something somewhere in the DMV area. I don't know, I just don't think they got many black people that would just wantingly wear a George Washington cat because he ain't get down with us like that. We just all know George Washington did get down with no black people. So why would we dress up like him for Halloween? I don't know, because I would have thought he would have been Frankenstein because she was the bride of Frank. Artif Artificial intelligence. He was like, listen, why were you out there dancing with the devil that would I don't I don't want to end up on page six and be, I say sir page six got better things to do than to look after you and your shiny head sir you are running for the city accountant in the third district upstairs to the left like don't nobody give a damn about you sir city alderman at a Halloween party at a very expensive private school his wife was dressed in public they don't give a shit about you. It's somebody uh, rolling around on the floor with their vagina out in a limo that they got to talk about uh, on, on in page six. They, they don't, they ain't I was like, what the hell is that about? He was acting like his stuck up ass mama, which I was like, sir, don't you make me dislike you because I dislike your mom. Nah. So now we over there with Charlotte and Harry and they at home watching the show to Americans, the costume that they were dressed up like at the party. They watching that on TV and Rock comes in and she's like, mama, daddy. This man saw me do this trick at the skate park and he was so excited and he gave me his card and he said he want me to be, um, he want me to be a model and this is the card or whatever. And then Charlotte was like, oh my God, it's Ralph Lauren. Look at the card, the letters are embossed. It's good quality it's card stock and whatever. And Harry was like, child, I can go to Kinko's and do that. I said, Kinko's? My ass is old, just like me. I remember Kinko's. I don't even think they have Kinko's anymore. I wonder if they have, I'm gonna have to Google it. Anything I need, child, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it online and they gonna do it for me and mail it to me, child. I don't leave my house. I'm like the people from Wally. <laughs> but Harry's not with it. Cause he's like, this is sketchy, baby. I don't, I'm not about to tell you calling nobody. And then the next thing you know, I'm talking about uh, rock wherever you are. We love you and we gonna try to get you home. Hell no. Like, and I would have said the same thing. Cause that's, that sounds sketchy. That's how it used to happen back in the day. Like if you talk to these models or like watch their little documentaries, they'd be like, I was walking around the mall and this guy gave me a card or like I was working at a pet store and this guy came in and was like, Hey, do you want to be a model? And now it's like, Naomi Campbell or some shit. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it still happens that way. So Seema, Carrie, and Naya are at the bar that Seema was talking about with all the rich men in the hotel. And Harry says, the last time I went to a bar to meet a man, my phone flipped. Like I closed my phone, like I flipped it closed. And I was like, girl, baby, let me tell you something. That's how I know I'm old because the kids will never know. Okay, the kids will never know the satisfaction that came with actually hanging up on somebody on a flip phone. Do you understand me? It's nothing like getting the last word and then pop, like closing that shit like real hard, like pop, like that. Like, you know, having something to physically do to end a conversation, especially if you piss. Oh baby, 
Huh, baby, that's top tier, okay? I really wish that everybody has that experience at least one time in their life to be in a really serious, heated conversation and just be like, man, fuck you, bing! Or like if you had a house phone, whoo, if you had a house phone and you was hanging up on somebody and you hung the phone up so loud you heard the ringer, bing, like that, oh, baby. Because now all you could do is, man, shut your ass up. Like, what is that gonna do? They don't do nothing for me. They start talking about um, how many yams they've seen, right? And so, Naya says, I've only seen two because I met my high school boyfriend and model you in. I was like, Lord Jesus. And then, <laughs> stop eating. And then I met Andre in college. So she's only seen two yams. Listen, if you are a loved one, are single and have not experienced a young, wild, and free Soyo Royal Oats expedition in your life, I highly recommend that you safely try to embark on that journey. You get to experience, you know, some things that you just, as an adult, cannot do. Baby, I remember we were at a party and I met this dude and he was like, hey, I can get y'all VIP into the such and such. And I was like, I right, bet, let me go get my people. We went with the dude. Who is the dude, L? Babe, I don't know. I don't know. I'm alive to tell the story, okay? You can do that when you young, wild, and free. Baby, ask me to do that now, because fuck you. I'm not going nowhere with you. What you talking about? You ain't about to murder me, baby. I ain't been murdered in my life yet, okay? I done got here, and I'm going to stay here. I'm not going nowhere with you. Anyway, so, so Seema gets hit on by this guy at the bar, and he's like a gin salesman, and, you know, he's hitting on her, and it works. Naya gets, he starts making eye with this dude with a milk dud head across the bar, right? He a dark skinned black guy. Now he got two earrings and a turtleneck on. Pause. Baby, I don't know. No, I don't approve of the turtlenecks. I keep telling y'all quit giving me turtlenecks. I don't like that shit. It's very untrustworthy, okay? We got to put a stop to it, okay? I need to write a petition. I got to contact my senator or something. Girl, I'm gonna have to call Anna Wintour and tell Anna to cut that sh cut it out. Okay. Seema and Naya, or talking to their little respective people. And Carrie's like, you know what? This is a good ass time to get caught up in my wordle. I said, hell yeah, sis. You better do your wordle. So Nasima takes the, the gin guy back to her house. And, you know, they're rolling around, baby. It's getting hot. It's getting heavy. And the man stops her, you know, from like kissing on her. And they, they're kissing and the man stops her. And he's like, hey, you know, just FYI, I do suffer from ED. I said, baby, not not E-D-E-D, -E -D. are you talking about? And I'm like, Lord, what would I do if anybody ever told me that? I probably want to get on goddamn Wikipedia and like, let's learn about it. Take it like, teach me fool. I'm trying to understand what, the, what you're talking about. Like what's causing it? Is it from something? Is it curable? Like I know that's what the Viagra is for. Do you have a pill for it? How long you had it for? Like, let's get down to the nitty gritty. What's what your vast deference talking about? Okay, like let's, let's talk about it. I, I just want to have, I have a couple, Questions, comments, concerns, and queries. You know, I got the, you know, I'm nosy, child. I don't want to know. And that would have killed the mood and his ass would have probably went home. See, that's why I'm single now, child. So Seema says, oh, well, you know, that's that's cool. I, I don't think we're going to have an issue because, you know, I'm I'm right, I'm ready to go. And you doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? I don't think we're going to have an issue. But the man says, well, let me just go ahead and handle my business just in case. My man gets out of bed, all right, goes over to the chair and pulls out a suitcase. Like it was big, you understand what I'm saying? Like I was like, what? First of all, did you bring that? How did you get that in there? But wait a minute, where did that come from? Because it was a big ass, long ass briefcase. I said, sir, what is what is happening here? Cause I know you're not about to. I already know you're not about to. And guess what he was, he was, he was about to. First of all, <laughs> he stood in front of Seema and looks her directly in her soul while he put a penis pump on his penis. Baby, let me tell you something. I would, I don't ever need to hear associated with no penis pump because the sound effects for this part, it was just too much for my soul. Baby, when I tell you the 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 pump for the for the pump, like the actual pump <laughs> for the pump. Babe, I'm talking about industrial strength. You hear me? I'm talking about this come from Sam's Club. This is like a bulk size. We about to inflate a jumping house for a three to five year old's birthday party. Baby, this thing was industrial strength. I thought <laughs> that it was going to be, you know, when you go to the doctor's office, baby, it got the little bulb, you know, the 
I thought it was gonna be that. My man could have blew up a tire to a Dodge Ram pickup. You understand? That shit was gold plated and it had a little dial on it to make sure. I was like, what the hell? That was too much for me. It was too much for my soul, babe. I would have politely told him to gather up his big ass penis pump, put that shit over his shoulder like a bum on a railroad and get your ass up out of my house. I don't know you like that. This is something that you do when there's a level of comfortability here. I don't know you, sir. I don't know you at all. First of all, let me call my doorman, have him escort your ass out and tell him to put an APB out on you if you come through this door ever again. He was like, yeah, girl. I was hey, why are he looking at her like that? <laughs> and Seema let him smash. I said, okay, you know, do you seem you do you, baby. You gotta get off how you gonna get off. But I would have just told him to get on out, child. You wouldn't I can't do that with you. Anyway, so the next day, Seema is telling Carrie about penis pump Paul. What's that his name, Paul? I don't know. That's gonna be his name now because it makes sense to me. Penis pump Paul and all his little escapades with his damn gear that he had to bring. And when he when Seema told Carrie that the man had a penis pump, she stopped in the middle of the bike lane. Like, she never heard that before. Like, that that literally stopped her in her tracks. All right, because you got to set it up because it was a meet cute coming, okay? So, the man, they had a man riding in the bike lane, and he was like, bike lane, bike lane, bike lane. And he didn't hear, she didn't hear him. And instead of going around her or stopping or anything like that, he swerves and falls off his bike. And then you know, you know, Carrie is completely disheveled when anything happens. She just is so for Klimp, confused, overwhelmed, underwhelmed, on top of the whelm, left whelm, and right whelm. Whenever anything happens to her. I'm so sorry. I was on the phone with my friend and she was telling me about a penis pump and I just didn't know it and I never heard it. I never, you know, I could take you to the, to the urgent care. There's, there was one on 14th street and, and one of the Olsen twins went in there and I was like, oh my God, what is the Olsen twin doing in here? And I'm like, what do they live around here? And it was aggravating me. I'm like, bitch, shut up. Calm down. I don't want to hear about Ashley or Elizabeth or that other Olsen girl. What's the other one? Ashley and Mary Kate child. She goes to try to get him into the urgent care and you know, they, they start to kind of, he's calmed down a bit and she's helping him to fill out his forms and you know, he, she, his name is George and whatever. So he goes to the back and she waits there because once again, she doesn't want to be on the hook if he decides to sue her or if he's really hurt. So he comes out, his arm is broken and, <laughs> and the the nurse, <laughs> the nurse is like, George, your car got declined when you put it on file. Yeah, come over here and give us another call. And I'm like, damn, it's wretched. Why are you so loud about it? <laughs> Something about that lady was just really funny to me. Hey, your call don't work? No. Bring your broke ass over me. <laughs> I said, Nurse Ratchet, calm down, girl. Just be discreet about it. With Naya and Miranda, they're talking about Naya's one night stand and how she was feeling like really confident doing her little early morning walk. It wasn't a walk of shame for her. She was on it and she was like, everybody was looking at her like, yeah, girl, I know you just got dig down. You better do it. Like she felt like excited about it. She was like, damn, I should have been doing this. I just did what I had to do with him. Went to my house, took my bath and got in my bed and slept late. Like I should have been doing these things. So long story short, they have a conversation about Miranda and how she going from here to Jerusalem trying to do all this dumb shit that she doing. And Naya offers to let her stay in her ex-husband's like studio or whatever. And so now Naya and Miranda are gonna be roommates. Now, as a former adjunct professor on a college campus, I can tell you that what she's doing is inappropriate. All right, Naya will probably have to go in front of somebody, at least the chairperson for her department because you're not supposed to do that. They may not know that it is inappropriate for a professor and a student to live together. Not sure why, but Carrie brings George, the bike guy with the broken arm, food because she feels bad, I guess. I think she just wanted some yam. I ain't gonna hold you. Like she could have just asked him. She ain't had to buy him no soup. So she brings him food and she's like, I felt bad. And you know, I know you have this big project you are working on. So the guy's an app developer. And that, you know, it's a terrible time for you to be able to lose the ability to type and text and whatever. And you know, whatever. So they 
um, are on the sofa, they eating food, and they have a little doo -doo -doo -doo, and they start making out. And in walks the business partner, Kara, get out. Miranda and Che are at dinner, and Miranda is listening to Che talk about testing. And testing is where they get like random people to do like a focus group and watch an episode of Che's show to see whether or not they like it with like regular people and not like studio insider people. Miranda tells Che that she's gonna be staying at Naya's because she feels like she's cramping Che's style. Why that girl just didn't say, I can't deal with you. Baby, you a night person, I'm a day person. We, we just not working. Why, why Che not cramping Miranda style? So Che is like, I wanna do whatever works for you. And inside, I'm, I know Che was like, good. Bitch, cause I don't, you know what I'm saying? Che don't want Miranda. So they're at this Asian place and whatever Miranda is eating is very spicy. And she's eating it because she's like very tired. And she's like, oh Lord, I want the spice to wake me up. Then Che says, I'm worried about the spice on your lips because I don't want to have curry lingus later. Mm. I ain't gonna say nothing. Y'all already know what I'm gonna say. If you watch me for more than one video, you already know what I'm gonna say. So you don't need me to hear me say it. Charlotte is taking Rock to the photo shoot. It's legit. It's a photo shoot for Ralph Lauren. They're doing like a family kind of spread for the clothes. And Charlotte is wearing all old school, you know, original OG Ralph Lauren from head to toe. Rock is, you know, there and getting styled and shot and whatever. And Charlotte is there supervising. And Charlotte says, thank you so much for letting me come with you today. Letting me come. You think I'm letting my child go to a photo shoot in New York or anywhere on planet Earth alone? Child, never. You will see any picture of my child and my elbow would just be in the very tip, tip corner of the picture. So I'm not leaving you or that letting me come. Let. So Harry comes with his little wig on and he's trying to make sure everything is legit. And Charlotte catches him and he's and she's like. You better leave, because if Rock catches you, you're not going to be the fun day. You just hating on me, because I get to do something that's fun, and I don't have to be the one to be the disciplinarian or whatever. And Harry's like, yeah, you're right. I'm going to go ahead and go. And he just really, I think he just really like wearing that wig. I ain't going to hold you. I feel like the next couple scenes, we might see Harry just wearing the wig, making a cup of tea in the house, doing some little light reading or something. You know what I mean? My favorite part of the episode was the testing. Okay, look how big my smile was, because finally. Finaler, okay, finaler. Somebody is saying something real on the show. So they do the testing and they in a group and you know they got a two-way mirror and Che and some other people are watching the reactions to the focus group. And the people are like, oh my god, I love Tony Danza. That man has a good solid head of hair. He was funny, he looked like he was um uncomfortable when Che was crying the binary scene and Che was like see I told y'all I told y'all y'all didn't want to listen and so the the guy who's running the focus group is like did y'all have anything else that y'all wanted to say was there anything that y'all didn't like about the show and then this person says I ain't like Che Che is what Che is like what a boomer thinks a non-binary person is supposed to act like yes correct they wanted us to know that they heard what we were saying, but they still like, fuck you, Che is Che. And Che still gonna be lame and, and, and very difficult to swallow and process and, and have to deal with. For you as a viewing audience, we don't give a shit. So Che was very hurt by that. And then the guy was like, does anybody else have anything negative to say about Che? And everybody was like, and I guess they wanted us to feel sad because they was playing a slow piano solo. You know, whenever they played a little slow piano solo in the background, it's supposed to be sad. Child, I was like, so now back at the house, Che tells Miranda they didn't like me in the show. They like Tony Danza, they just didn't like me. And then Miranda was like, well, they can all eat shit. And then Che is like, well, somebody that's genderqueer from Brooklyn, they ain't like the show. It's not just people from just in the middle of nowhere with no kind of concept of diversity and, and queer folks and how that looks in media and all of that is somebody from Brooklyn who is genderqueer themselves. They didn't like my character. And then Miranda was like, well, they can eat shit and die. Everybody on planet Earth can eat shit and die. And then Che was like, that's not helping. And Miranda was like, sorry. And I'm thinking, okay, you know when somebody that you love has gotten bad news that you don't agree with, you know, you'll just kind of hype them up and like really get, you know, kind of upset about it. That's what Miranda was doing. Um, and then Che told her to stop. All right, cool. 
And so, you know, Che was like, you know, what am I gonna do? I can't afford this apartment now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then Miranda was like, well, you'll just make another show. Like people just like get handed TV shows, like, you know, like people pass out a, a bottle of water at a barbecue. And it was very childish. Cause she was like, I'll be your cheerleader. Go Che, go Che, you can do it. Go Che, go. Miranda should have read the room a little bit. It was time for her to be quiet. Che was smoking weed. She wasn't going up. She was going down, okay? Che was like, I need some space. And then, you know, Miranda was like, all right, cool. You know, I'll stay at Naya's tonight and I'll come back and I'll come see you tomorrow. And Che was like, nah, I'm gonna need a little longer than that. Stay gone till I tell you come back here. Yeah? Miranda need to face up front, baby, expeditiously. Now, I was glad that we were able to go from that train wreck to SEMA and Penis Pump Paul. Now, Penis Pump, Penis Pump Paul thought he had put it down, baby. <laughs> Penis Pump Paul was like, woo! Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, like he was, <laughs> he was feeling so good. And Seema was like, like she was like, I'm glad you got what you needed, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into my top draw and get that thing that goes, that changes people's life on the daily, okay? Just take people from sad to happy in, in about two, three, four, five minutes, okay? Depending on your tolerance. Starts to use it, right? And so she's not like mad at him. She's like, well, listen, you got you. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get me. Then maybe we can go get something to eat. And the dude is like, not cool. And Seema is like, sir, I know you lying. But he was very upset with Seema and packed his little penis pump and left, baby. Not cool. Come back, get, get out of my face. <laughs> and the killing part was he was getting his stuff and she had it on level one. Then the further away he got and the more shit he was talking, the higher she turned it up and he was getting mad. And I'm like, hell yeah, that's why Seema is my girl, okay? That's me all day. Baby, don't tell me what to do in my house. So we in the episode with Carrie and she's over at George's house and they are making out and you know everything is good but the <clears throat> his phone rings and it's his business partner and he's like hey what a slide that cat like you was supposed to send it I ain't never get it and he was like oh shit I forgot so it seems like George is a bit of a fuck up because if you got money on the line you too old to just be like oh yeah I don't know what's going on I ain't gonna, you know whatever so he goes and gets up and tries to go get the slide deck to have it messengered over to the business partner and he leaves the FaceTime on for some reason and then a business partner starts spilling the beans and like pouring out his heart to carry he's a great guy i'm sorry i don't have anything against you he just you know i just he's the creative and i'm the business part of it and we just gotta stick together because we've been doing this for so long and i've had to do it and carol was like man fuck all that i ain't got time for that why she was rolling out the bed and sneaking and tiptoeing out so that the business partner couldn't hear but she tiptoed out the room and put her shoes on and was like, hey, um, I'm about to go. Okay. And then that's just like that. She got her ass up and left out the house. And I was like, hell yeah, baby, do that. I wasn't mad at that either. He was cute. I thought they would have been cute together. But, you know, we know Aiden is coming. So, you know, it wouldn't have been right for her to be like in another relationship and Aiden would have been there and da 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 So I knew it wasn't going to end up like anything long term with that guy. But I did like how it ended with her walking down the street and she was like looking youthful and her hair was down. And, you know, she didn't have it all tight pulled back like she was like a drill sergeant and shit. So I wasn't mad at this episode. That's what episode ended. Um, low key enjoyed certain parts of this episode. But reminiscent of what Sex in the City used to feel like. They weren't acting like old ass ladies in the mausoleum already. They had some questionable decisions that were made, but all overall, I give this episode a five out of 10. Y'all like that? Baby, listen, that's like high praise from me, baby, because this thing, has an average track record of having a negative 703 out of 10. I will take it, okay? I will take it any day. Adjust the settings on the artificial intelligence that they got writing the scripts from now on. If they can tweak them settings, then hopefully Aiden come in there and don't piss me off. Because if Aiden come in there and don't act like Aiden, I'm going to be pissed because Aiden was my boy i love aiden okay and if they have him coming in there acting crazy or acting like big or being like real cool like yeah i ain't worried about it I, you know i just be chilling i just you know i ain't even worried about it i don't woodwork no more i just fuck with all plastics i don't even care about the environment like i'm gonna be pissed okay so just here's hoping that he don't act crazy with himself 
in whenever he shows up okay so comment down below and let me know what you thought of this episode this was a fun one for me i can't wait to hear what y'all think about it and i'll talk to y'all later bye